I've got both our two windows open, one under Robert and one under me. So I'm watching that as well. All right, we're live. Yes, we are. Hello, everybody. Great to see each and every one of you. And uh, got to say, welcome to the premiere episode of the new podcast, How Do You Know That? And, you know, we're just excited that you're here with us, that uh, you're able to be a part of this, and that we're going to be able to share these messages all over the world. You know, we have a remarkable individual who is the person who is our foundation here with this podcast. And we're going to get started here in just a moment. Um, and his story, first of all, really does inspire and captivates, especially when you read his amazing book, How Is That Working? Rat Race to Freedom, which you can get by going to roberthollis.com forward slash join. Um, you know, he is a true visionary, an entrepreneurial evangelist, a life mechanic. He's been, uh, it's been said that he is a GPS to success. Honestly, I will agree. And he's a dear friend and a mentor, and he's helped over 67 people become millionaires. And if you've ever heard the phrase, success leaves clues and documentation beats conversation, he truly lives by them. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get started with our very first podcast, let's go ahead and give it up for Mr. Robert Hollis. Well, thank you very much, Craig. I, I love and appreciate you so much. And and uh, man, the hostess with the most is. So here we are creating history again. Um, I know there's been other people that have done podcasts, but you know, hey, this is us doing a podcast. And the title itself, you know, um, how do you know that? I just want to share with you each on sort of the thought that we're doing with this. I know that it's going to evolve and I know it's going to change. But here's just a statement for me uh, before we get started today and just have a bunch of fun. Um, you know, when someone asks me what is stopping them from getting whatever they want in their life, before you can believe and have faith and look forward to going towards something, we got to get rid of all the beliefs that were instilled in us. We have all these thoughts of the way that things are and what if they're not? So, you know, it, it's a quote that I've known for is that if what you know that you know that you know isn't so, when would you like to know? Now, when I tell people that, and they go, well, I want to know right now. I, I don't think you do. Because as soon as you do, you now become aware. If I could wish anything for anybody, it would be awareness. And let me give you just one thought of mine. Okay, so here, I, I do what I'm told to do. I, I People tell me that I'm a good mechanic. So... I follow that. I, 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 I had an uncle <clears throat> that I only seen once a year. And he said, Robert, go to a tech school, go to the top tech school. So I went to North Dakota College of Science and became an automotive engineer. So that is a fancy word for someone that works on your car. <laughs> but I, you know, I also, um, I also, uh, you know, I uh, worked my way up and 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 became a master automotive technician by following the example of other people. Long story super short, I get hurt and have a doctor look at me in the face and said, oh, are you a mechanic? And I said, yeah. And he said, not anymore. You messed your knee up so bad that that you won't be a mechanic anymore. So now I lost my identity. See, my whole identity, if you would have seen me out somewhere or at a wedding reception or at a bar or whatever, isn't it funny that we just look at people and go, well, what do you do? I'm a mechanic. I work on cars. Uh, not anymore. So now my identity has gone and I'm lost. 
So then I meet a guy because someone told me this guy made 62 grand. And I went and meet the guy and the guy goes, uh, hey, when you get your knee fixed, what are you going to do? Oh, I was on a direct path to being a crew chief. Why? Well, because you go get an education, you work hard and get a job, and then you keep getting jobs and try to get raises and promotions so you can take care of your family. So he says, the reason that you got a job is for money. And when he said it, it was like one of those Yoda statements, right? It was like, what? Yeah. Yeah, because of money. Oh, because you need money for bills and food and blah, 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 right? So here's the thing. He said to me, Robert, you don't need a job if you want to make money. See, that is messing with my paradigm. That is like, what, what the hell? I guess you could go rob banks. I guess you could win the lottery. No, 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 Rob. No, listen, Robert. There's people out there that make millions and millions and millions of dollars a day and they don't have a job. So that's that thing. If, the, if, if what you know isn't so, we're, we're, how do you know that? How do you know that? And all of a sudden I went, are you serious? So that's like a significant emotional event where I was going like, he goes, I can show you how to make 62 grand a month, but it's not by having a job. And see how that plays with my, you know, how do you know that? And so from the whole title of this and documentation beast conversation, all these things came up from a billionaire named Roger Penske. And Roger Penske just basically in a meeting asked anybody if they had any ideas. I wanted to fit in. I was new with the company for about two two months and I raised my hand and he said, go ahead, Bobby. And I shared with him this idea that, that I thought was a great idea. He then shared with me, how do you know that? I was like, what? He goes, how do you know that? Um, I heard a table of a bunch of crew, I mean, uh, crews, crew and a crew chief sitting at a table and I was overhearing what they're saying. He goes, Robert, was you wearing your uniform? And I said, yeah. He goes, how do you know they wasn't just making some stuff up laughing, knowing that you were overhearing them so you could get me off track? What? He goes, Robert, before you start thinking something and sharing information, why don't you take the time to find out whether or not it's documented and true? And my biggest reason for doing how is that working? And also, you know, how do you know that is I want to bring on people and have them constantly through interviews and and really stimulating the mind to find out. If you knew, if if you knew what I knew, you'd have to be pretty stupid not to have my lifestyle. <laughs> it's like it's like it couldn't be for you. But what if a lot of the things that you're doing on a day to day basis is not only because someone told you that this is the way it is, but you never ever took the time to find out if it was actually fact, whether it was working or documented. So now you got these people out there who say, I'm working hard. You wouldn't believe how hard I'm working. Working hard with the wrong thought pattern, with the wrong vision, doing the wrong crap is not going to get you anywhere. Where did it say anywhere that if you worked hard, and again, isn't this sort of a perception? This is a perception. I'm working hard. Me and my wife recently, and I'll get off the subject, seen a post uh, by Kevin Hart. And it showed the days that he's going to be doing a stand-up comedic return re, re, routine. And maybe my, Matt can find that. But when you see that he's working and doing a stand-up routine virtually every day for 90 days, uh, that's work. 
<laughs> that that that's work when you hear a uh you know isn't it crazy that taylor swift is is getting a bunch of kudos because she's been in a concert twice where it's downpouring and raining and she's pushing the water off her off her keyboard and she's standing out there till one two in the morning singing in a downpouring rain and that, that might be work uh working on patching potholes on asphalt in 125 or 30 degree weather that that's work so the perception of work is just what you brought up so i want to welcome you all to our first podcast and what we're going to do is bring on matt bring on craig and what we're going to just do is i'm going to start out leading uh the conversation but you guys are going to understand immediately where it's going because i think that if you find out that there's a lot of people that thought things that they no longer think those things and their life is better, maybe you'll go, oh my God, I thought that. Oh my God, I thought that too. Oh my God, I thought that. And maybe we can help you break some of these. So uh, Matt and Craig, are you guys on? I'm here, can you hear me? <laughs> and I'm here, I, I, I can hear the two of you. Can you hear me? Can hear you. We'll see, well, this is our first time running this this way so I'll, I'll be looking to chat to make sure everybody hears us okay um we can yeah. go from there they should be able to hear you guys i'm just making sure whether they can hear me or all right anybody so. who's in the youtube chat can you hear matt and can, can you, you hear matt? robert can you hear Craig? <laughs> and can you hear myself? myself just maybe a three yeses if there's a no in there then we got to figure it out <laughs> no i think it's all good on their end so let yep. me see. Can can see each one of you, Eric. Can you yep. hear each one of us? Looks Look, great. I mean, I can check right now. Just give me a sec. All right. And it's well, yeah, I, I can see. I can see us all. I just didn't. Yeah. Uh, Mary Valchik says nope. we can hear you all. So hey, yep, awesome. everything's great. Everything's great. So now I can see the chat. So <laughs> hi, positively, Polly. Welcome to the inner circle, Sally. Welcome to the inner circle. Wow. Those are our oh. two new people. So give them welcome, a big welcome. hand. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank I'm excited you. for this, you guys. This is this is a brand new road for us. And this won't be, you know, we have a lot of different ideas for different podcasts covering different subjects and stuff. But this is one that immediately came to us and came to my dad of something that we definitely wanted to do, especially the interviews and stuff. So this is us just getting our bearings and getting it started. This is episode one of probably thousands. Yeah, that will will happen. Yeah. Um, you know, from interviewing all different kinds of people about all different kinds of things that a lot of people may believe as reality or facts or the way that you think that are just not that way. Like it's just trained knowledge or you're stuck or you're in a situation. So this podcast is built um, for us to tackle those subjects and to talk about them. And whether it's my dad, Robert Hollis, bringing on people for interviews and tackling those subjects, people that have experienced these things and, and gotten over them or had a paradigm shift in a different area, or it's just topics happening in the world or with us personally going, listen, how did I know that? Th think I knew that for so long and that wasn't the case. So with that said, that's just my opening <laughs> wow. statement on it. Um, I'll, I'll throw it over to Craig if Craig's got anything he wants to share before we... Well, you, you shared the two new people who joined our uh, inner circle and bless you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and again, for those of you who want to join the inner circle, there's two ways. You can go to roberthollis.com forward slash join, or let's see if I can, I'm, I'm trying to arrow. Well, I can't tell. It's, it's probably <laughs> over that way. I mean, cause there's a delay it, 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 on the you YouTube. Can ask Matt where to point. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I'm going to throw something on the screen later. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can go hit that join button that's down below. That I know for sure <laughs> It's the location <laughs> below this video if you're watching on YouTube. Click that join button and you could be part of the inner circle. And I mean, like, for example, tomorrow we've got the breakthrough session, our, our breakthrough session number three, but two specifically for the inner circle. So, you know, just and that and just so many other things where we all get together and we mastermind and that's the beauty of this podcast is we're also doing this yeah you know we get the opportunity to mastermind to talk to people as matt said and as robert has shared and this is going to be um yes uh, sarah lipscomb you know it's it's going to be phenomenal she says that we were awesome 
on uh, Facebook, AMAs, Ask Me Anything, which are on Saturdays, and uh, the Mastering of the Science Getting Rich. Well, we're just going to keep moving forward. Yeah. And that's the beauty of this. Um, and, you know, Robert, like your, your book, you know, how is that working? You ask those, you know, that's just the first question. But right. the other thing is like, okay, so how do you know that? What, what is the reason for your belief? And well, you, you make people, I'm going to say not, I, well, you make people question, but you make people open their eyes to other ideas, other thoughts, and even feelings, especially <laughs> when you have the breakthroughs. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen a breakthrough session, go to the YouTube channel. We already have one up there that everybody can watch and you get the idea of what those breakthrough sessions are. Watch it. Oh my goodness. Robert goes one-on-one -on -one well, I shouldn't say goes one on one. I should say Robert and the individual that he works with talk things through. And it's an amazing transformation. It really everybody, is to see everybody, it. everybody gets the breakthrough because they see the person having the breakthrough when they might not have the courage. Or sometimes if our own mind could figure out why we're stuck or why we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing or why we don't love the way we're supposed to love and and why we're not fulfilled i i love that comment uh, you know it's uh it, it it's basically saying how can you get yourself out of a situation that your hurt mind got you into so it's by me listening to a lot of people me doing this is is inspiration from watching other people do it you know, it, it's crazy that now Matt and I and Craig spend a lot of time clicking on on uh, people's um, YouTube channels and, and seeing that they have tens of billions of views, tens of billions of views. And what YouTube is really turning into is like a channel. Yeah, you can turn the channel. You can go on Netflix. You can go on HBO, You but tune into a channel and what podcasts are doing now is uh, I just recently seen an episode where they said Netflix is over. It, 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 it's it's going to change these passwords and people are going to leave, never come back. And, and the reason why is because people are going to start understanding that they can watch a podcast like this and get entertained and learn something and actually get their feelings and their thoughts stimulated enough to have aha moments. You know, we call them significant emotional events because if there's something that happened to you and you remember what it was, you never think about that thing the way it was ever again. And and I do that analogy of me thinking that girls had cooties and then me having my very first good kiss. Uh, wait a minute. Who told me that girls have cooties? I I didn't know how to find out the right answer to that. I believe some people that told me, oh, my God, girls have cooties. You don't want anything to do with them. And it probably took a couple of years off my life as far as some pretty cool, cool fulfillment. You know, <laughs> 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 the wrong guy. So now that Matt and, and Craig are out here, you know, I, I hope you don't mind me uh, jumping in here, you guys. But, you know, Craig, I, I, I want to start with you. No, I'm going to start with Matt. And so Matt being 31 <laughs> years old, uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, he's been around me his, his entire life. And Matt, in, in just 31 years of life, what would you say is not the biggest, but what was one thing that you know that you believe that you were willing to fight for, that you were willing to debate about, you were mm -hmm. willing to, yeah, you know, just basically you know, get get into an emotional argument about it, which was something that you used to believe that has evolved in your thinking from basically people that you've heard from to find out going, you know, I'm sort of freaking embarrassed that I thought that way about right. that thing. For me, I, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind is just like something that I've shared before on this channel, but like the whole control aspect and the whole thing of like, if I could just 
control a conversation or get people to think the way that I did that somehow um, life would be easier. Right. And what that the cause and effect of that is instead of that being the case, I just pushed people that were close to me away from me because I tried to get them to think the way that I, I thought, you know, so it's like, how, how did I know that? Well, it's like, well, in my own mind, I, I'm like, well, this is the right way. So of course I know it. Right. But the truth of the matter is, is that in a lot of areas, we, we make an attempt to get people to think the way that we are as if we can clone them in our image. And that's impossible. So like you get stuck in this kind of pattern of belief that- Like, like a right fighter? Right. No, that's a perfect word for it. Yeah, because you you really feel in your bones maybe that if you could just get them to see from your perspective that 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 all of a sudden you would be in a better situation of communication or if you could get them, you know, I don't have any children, but I've seen even through my dad and through my brother who has children and others, you know, that um, difference between like, allowing your kid to be your se themselves and then allowing trying to control them and trying to get them to be in your image and like either one causes a different version because obviously you can't be a completely free range i think they call them like free range parents right where they're like we don't discipline <laughs> our kids or anything like that we just let them be the way that they are i'm not saying go all the way with that although i'm not a parent so don't take my advice but at the other end of the spectrum is like absolute control, right? Where like they want to control their child's belief structure. They want to control, um, you know, what they think, what they feel. It's like what there's this think. large debate going on about what to allow your kids to listen to, what to allow them to watch. Um, my parents, my dad, in between. Perfect, uh, good spot, in my opinion. See, I grew up being allowed to listen to the music that I wanted to listen to, watch and play the video games that I wanted to. Um, a lot of the artists that I respect had a similar upbringing where they didn't, they weren't put in a position where it's like, you can't do this or you can't do that. Obviously there's barriers and stuff, but as far as that stuff goes, I think it shaped my mind, but in the same way, it like put me on a path of like, uh, trying to and my dad will immediately go oh yeah this makes sense but i used to try to get my family to watch things that i love i'm a huge fan of movies so i would get a movie that i'd really enjoy and i'd become like fervent about getting everybody to watch it and then i'd make this massive mistake of setting my whole family down to watch this movie that i'm excited about <laughs> he's already laughing but then we'd watch the movie and then it would be over and of course i'm asking everybody what they think and if everybody goes well you know that movie sucked like, I just, I didn't get it at all. Like, like District I would, 9. Right. I would sit there. Great film, by the way. Love that movie. But um, I, I would sit there and debate almost as long as, and this is many topics when I was growing up, as long as I could to try to get them or my family or friends to believe or see it the way that I see it. And looking back that that example i just gave was a small version of it but it really permeated my entire life right it permeated my close relationships with my wife my uh parents my friends just kind of everybody around me where there would be these situations where i would really try to get them into my thought pattern and so once i broke that and stopped doing that and just let people be themselves and be grateful for who they are be grateful for what they brought into my life i it was like one of the biggest barriers to connection that i did not know was there and so like now my connection with my friends and my family and my wife are amazing because i'm not sitting there trying to get them to know the way that i know things i'm accepting uh -huh. the way that they know things I'm not judging them for knowing less or I'm not angry at them for knowing more or trying to compete with them to know more. I'm learning from them instead and looking at everything as like a learning experience, every new person I meet. So that was like the a really big place for me. I, it, I, it was a huge change. So I, I, I'm not only super proud of you uh, because I, I immediately seen the difference in, in him and I and I don't know if this is the only book, but I know that you love personal development. You love reading all kinds of books. Right. And, uh, I know when you read um, 
how to win and influence friends and and people. And yeah. and Matt to me is one of the smartest people I know. And and so I know when he read that book from somebody else's perspective, I I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, I seen Bill uh, Shoemaker recently. You know, he had this. You know, his whole thing with. I'm going to be number one and I'm going to be very, first. I'm going to be the first on every, 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 everything that we did. And all of a sudden one day he's going, I don't have to be first. In fact, it feels good allowing somebody else to go first. And mm -hmm. when you experience that, that breakthrough or that paradigm shift, whatever the hell you want to call it, immediately the conversations after that is I would say stuff sometimes to just challenge my son. I didn't know the answer. I would just debate with him on the same subject that we're talking about. I knew he was going to bring this up. And my deal was, you know, you're sharing with me some very strong opinionated decisions, but I don't think it's from the free thinking that you have. I think that you're listening to other people and you're getting a synopsis of the way you think it should be from Reddit or whatever thing that you're plugged into. And so it was always weird because then when me and him had been in extremely heated conversations where we've raised our voices at each other and sometimes said things that maybe we shouldn't have. And of course, our wives are immediately gone out of the picture with whatever we were talking about. But my whole goal was I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know, but I would take the opposite position as him to make him really understand where he was getting the information. But then that doesn't work anymore because now he is more of a, a lover, you know what I mean? Instead of being a right fighter and I could come up with something and he would go, you know, I just need to understand that he's coming from a different perspective, different wisdom, different upbringing. He hangs around different people. And I've even had him, and, the, and since he made this decision and not being in, in control of people's thoughts or wanting them to be like him, I've even had Matt go, you know, whether he's, you know, making me feel good or not, he's, he would just go, you know, I, wow, that's a different way of thinking about it. And I never thought about that. And I really feel listened to instead of just uh, being talked at, you know, so Matt used to talk to me. Like all of you know, you know, there becomes a certain age. And unfortunately for some people watching, you're still in it regardless of your age. <laughs> but we usually right. always talk about, you know, there's these teenagers that know everything. You know, you, you I was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't teach them nothing. Uh, they they still live off you, but they know everything. <laughs> It's they, like, listen, they, once I get out on my own, I'll have this all figured out. <laughs> and and there's always that thing where when you're young, right? And I'm sure different time periods were different because like obviously um, being from the millennial generation, we kind of had a different level of coddling from our parents, at least most of us and, and, than, and, the, and than uh, the other generations, right? I know, Matt. Thank you for sharing, man. I, I really love that you shared that. I'm sure it got to to, to some people because- how many of you, you can put a one in the chat or whatever and, and say, you know this person, but how many of you guys know a right fighter? You know what I mean? A, a person where we're asking, how do you know that? And here's when you know you're a right fighter, and then I'm going to go to Craig, is, um, is during the conversation, the person that you're arguing with actually makes sense. <laughs> and when you want to be in control that's yeah. like the worst thing ever because like we you know you if you're both if both are fighting to be right or i'm fighting to be right i get in this situation and that's where it gets heated right that's where you say yeah. things you shouldn't say or you take it personal right and that comes from a place of going oh no i know i'm wrong but i'm not going to back down <laughs> right you see people like this all the time right and it's like you, you can see them on the internet. There's so many different places. Like Twitter is just a cesspool of these kind of people, right? Yeah. You'll, you'll click on a comment. You'll go, I'm sure this is the same with Facebook too, but you see a, see someone post something and your immediate thought once you read it is to go to the comment, yeah. right? That's like your first thought. You're like, oh man, I know there's going to be people just 
And then you see, and there's like one thread and it's like 80 responses back and forth between the person that posted it and the person <laughs> that said the opposite thing. And so like, there's this thing going on between all of us right now, because social media gave us a voice that we didn't right. have before. Right. Like you had to be somebody to be noticed, right. To get in the newspaper, to get on the news. So people are like, but now everyone has their own newspaper and everyone has their own news station. Mm -hmm. You know, we're sitting on here right now streaming to you guys. So with that, everybody thinks that they they have to have their opinion on everything. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things for me in my life, the how do you know that thing for me, just like I was saying, was giving that up, giving, accepting that I have my own opinion, but accepting that it's not my job to get other people to believe as I do. Right. That if I learned from other people, and observed them become an observer instead that the wealth of knowledge that I could accumulate would be vast. And then I'm looking at a whole life of accumulating knowledge instead of trying to get everybody to believe the way I believe. And so people have seen me over the last few years and they go like, wow, Matt's just become so much more wise. If you wanted to know how that happened, this is how that happened. Is that I started listening to people and observing them and understanding them and learning from them instead of going, you know, that belief that they believe, I just don't agree with it. Yeah. Right. I, it's fine if I don't agree with it. I don't have to fight with them on why, because no one ever changes their mind that way. <laughs> you know, we're about to go into an election year <laughs> yeah. in the United States. And it's like, we're going to have a lot of people that go back and forth with that. Right. Right. So. Well, thank you, Matt. And, and, I, I like I, I seen a lot of people put the ones up, you know what I mean? That, right. You know, I always love saying, do you know of somebody that's still a right fighter? Because I'm not asking you to say that you're it. But like Matt, Matt said, when when you're talking to somebody and you're in emotional conversation or debate or argument with them, and all of a sudden they say a couple of things that go, oh, that makes that makes sense. So then what you do is, you know, you're sort of stuck in the corner. So then what you got to go is I got to say, Matt, listen, you know, what I thought I heard you say was this and this. With this. <laughs> yeah. How many of you guys know people that they're such right fighters that they got to change the freaking subject? They got to change the subject. Go, well, they call that like a straw man argument or something <laughs> along those lines. Right. Where it's like or a comparison. <laughs> Right. It's like the moving the goalpost is another one. It's like <laughs> you answer, you answer, but then it's like a hypothetical, right? And yeah. you'll see this a lot in politics, especially. So it's always a hypothetical because it's easier to debate a hypothetical than the facts. So it's right. like, hypothetically, what about is is what it is if, in the news. Yeah, hypothetically, if this, yeah, what yeah. about is another great one, Craig. But it's like, hypothetically, if this situation happened, could you imagine how bad that would be? And then they start thinking, getting you to think about it like it's real, right? Like that's that's not a hypothetical, that's reality. And then what about is what Craig said is exactly the same. It's like, hey, isn't don't you think this issue should be fixed? Yeah, but what about this issue though? If we're gonna fix mm -hmm. that one, then what about this one? And it's like, yeah. but we're not fixing either one. Yeah. <laughs> we're just moving from what about to what about. So great. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I, I hope you guys are starting to get a feel of what I want this to be. If we can actually hear interviews and have heart to heart talks with people about how they change their mind, how they change their heart, how they change their thoughts and their heart would change how they believe. Mm. See, and all of a sudden it's like, well, people are like, before we got on here. Matt's like, hey, what are the bullet points? And I'm saying like, free flow, I, I got this. And Craig's like, hey, wait a minute. If we're all gonna be on the show, we don't wanna look like idiots. We know you got your stuff figured. <laughs> and I said, just let me, trust me, trust me, it's gonna be okay. And so, but both of these guys have watched me freestyle for years. So uh, I, I hope you guys are getting that that's one thing of many that Matt, and Matt, thank you for being vulnerable and, and thank you for, being that there's probably not too many people that used to be right fighters that go, hey, that wasn't right. <laughs> yeah. And I want to say before you throw it over to Craig and talk to him, I want to say, too, that I'm not always in that zone. Right. Right. Like I try to keep my mind there. The mind is something that you have to, like, pay attention to and see. So do I still fight for the right to be right? 
do I still get emotional and tap back into that area? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Me too. So, so, you know, one of the things we want to do about being so honest about how do you know that is like, there's a lot of things that we may know for a fact are bad for us that we shouldn't be doing. And we have awareness of it, but still sometimes we make that mistake and do that anyway. Yeah. Not, and, a, not only that, but one would be, we know that we know that we can do it and we just don't do it. It's like, oh yeah. why do yeah. I fight every morning? Mom gets up, Dex and Leo are golden retrievers. You know, you can't even say the word walk. You can't even, they now know our sing, signal, you know? So mom <laughs> will look at me and Terry will look at me and do this. And the dogs go fricking bananas. Well, now you got to make up a decision. Are they, are you going to, are you going to go because they're excited or are you going to make up some stupid mistake and, and say, not today, uh, lie to yourself and say, I'm too busy. No, get your ass up, put your shoes on, go out the door. You know what I mean? Right. But I'm going to have that same discussion with myself tomorrow morning. <laughs> and <laughs> yep. Why does it have to be every day that, that, that we do this with ourselves and, you know me, I'll tell myself, you know, listen, you know, exercise is just a waste of time. And it's like, no, it's not. You know what I mean? But but I can argue with that. So, Craig, you know where we're going. So, you know, <laughs> and we've given you quite a bit of time to sort of think about uh, uh, I'm 61. I know you're younger than me. <laughs> no, actually not. So I don't want you to if you don't feel comfortable, I don't want you to tell your age, but I wanted to give people, you know, I told Matt's age 31, but it'd be, it'd be neat to know, you know, people want to put us, they want to label us, Craig. You of know, course. That, that, so well, we were talking about that, about how we want, you know, the, the inner circle to be with us. I mean, yeah, labeling and, uh, but I mean, we, we'll come to that when the time comes, of, of sure, course, Sure. you know, um, okay. I got it. Here, here I am doing the promo because we've. I, I gotta at least get a few things in. <laughs> Mary Valchick, thank you so much for the donation. She, oh wow, wow. Yeah, she she put a donation in and it was very very nice. Thank you so much. And if you're willing to donate, it, watching us on YouTube, okay, you gotta be watching us on YouTube. There's a dollar sign in a box down below here, and click on that. That's in uh, below the chat, I should say, the chat of YouTube, and. The donations will go to a foundation. Robert yeah. has already said that the, any donations there will go to a special organization, a nonprofit. So thank you, Mary Valchik, for that. And then, uh, you know, you, you brought up the whole right fighter thing. And oh, my God, that was something that I was just so, <laughs> so much into. Oh, before that, please like this uh, video. Subscribe to the channel and share this video too, by the way, that helps us anyways. Um, but yeah, I used to be a big right fighter <laughs> and you know, it's like, damn it. I'm going to prove that I'm right and you're wrong. And yeah, maybe I was right, but because I took that attitude, it was just like, I don't know if I want to be around this guy. Yeah. And it's taken me a little bit of time and the comparison things too. It's like, you know, w since reading the science of getting rich, really, uh, it's f the whole creativity, creative versus comparative or competitive is so true. And I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot from just backing away not being okay. Yes. Okay. I'm an actor. Yes. I kind of like to be the big deal, but you know <laughs> what? It's not necessarily all the time that you should be the big deal. And it's more about like what we are doing here, talking with each other, finding out about what each other's wants, desires, feelings are. And I, one of the things that I said when I was on the Dr. Phil show earlier this year, you got to respect people. You need to respect people. And it's. I bet, I bet you people couldn't clearly 
write a definition of respect. Yeah. Uh, I, if, if we asked 100 people to write us a couple of sentences on respect, we would get 100 different answers. Absolutely. And we see lack of respect so much today that it's it's really, really difficult sometimes to respect because of the lack of respect that's out there. Yeah. And that's a problem that we need to get away from is the lack of respect. Okay, fine. So you may believe that, you know, gorilla is a god and that is your belief. Well, fantastic. You know, congratulations. You have a morality to gorilla and you follow that person's belief. And if your belief is best for humanity, at least what you feel is your humanity and how you deal with others, then by all means, follow gorilla. <laughs> and, and I've always been that because unfortunately I've actually had the, um, uh, it's n not, not necessarily racist comments, directed at me, but it's more of like, um, anti-religious comments Yeah, because I was not of the same belief of others. And in a sense, that's helped me to maybe more respect the beliefs but, but, of others. But, but you are one of those Jews, right? Oh, of course I am. I embrace the fact that I am Jewish and that I have that I was raised Jewish, that I was mm -hmm. raised with a set of morals that just happened to be Jewish. Yeah. And that's how I look at it. Does it mean that I will keep kosher, that I will do all of the things that a uh, I, I'm going to say orthodox type of Jew would follow? No. Right. I also incorporate modern day beliefs. Now, please, for those of my Jewish, you know, the, my Jewish tribe out there, please understand, I'm not knocking it. This is the way I believe, the way I was ra uh, raised. But see, this okay. is the perfect thing of how do you know that? Exactly. You see what I mean? There's, I can guarantee you a majority of the people that consistently are saying awful things about a certain group of people, and this example, Jewish, is all based on stuff that they heard that wasn't so. Exactly. I, I mean, they just take a big, big paintbrush and go, oh, so, you know, Jewish people will never buy at retail. You know, and, and you would have to do some kind of research to go back to find out where the hell that came from. And why do people think of that? You know, and you get all the slang and stuff, and it's like, it's, right. it's crazy because... The stuff that people say, they don't even know where it came from. Yes. They don't well, even they've know been like it. militarized, right? By someone else for a purpose oh. of their own. Especially so anytime today, you yeah. have somebody telling you to hate someone oh. or somebody or a group of people, and you don't take a step back and ask yourself if there's humanity in that, like, especially if you're a religious person, right? Mm -hmm. You believe and doing the right thing for your neighbors, for the people around you and supporting them, regardless if they believe in what you believe or live a life that you don't want, you don't accept or don't find agreeable, it's still totally healthy and normal to give them the same set of humanity that you would of somebody that shares identical beliefs with you. Absolutely. And if you do that, you'll find that you can actually learn things, like I said earlier, <laughs> from everybody. Right. Because yeah. there's different people out there that were raised in different ways and um, see the world in a different way. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. Like that's, yeah, you know, as long as the humanity part is respected. Right. Thank you. You have that's, to respect yes. exactly what Craig's saying. You have to respect other human beings and their autonomy too to do what they want. You know, I was born and raised here in the United States. So are you guys. I think, Craig, you're yes. born and raised in the United States. <laughs> yep. I know my dad was. So, <laughs> so we did the DNA test stuff. No, <laughs> but okay. uh, but being here in the United States, like I, I really, really love the thought. If you if you go by the way that the con country was built, that everybody within reason gets to do what they want to do with their lives. Yeah. Like obviously, and there's laws. You shouldn't do bad things to other people. 
or take advantage of other people. And those laws absolutely should exist. But at the same time, if someone wants to believe different, think different, support different, I, I respect them a thousand percent to do that, even though I may disagree with them on some of those elements. I think that's a great thing. So, yeah. yeah. And I know I posted something in, in, on my Facebook a while, uh, just a couple of days ago. In fact, yesterday, there it is, where it says, in, just on this topic of religion, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. Yeah. And the Dalai Lama said mm -hmm. that. And it's doesn't matter who you are. Be kind. Be human. We're all on this. Okay, I'm going to go altruistic. We're all in on this big blue marble circling the universe together. What is wrong with understanding each other and getting along? Yeah. It, and, you know, it's... Well, the science of getting rich, when it talks about competitiveness, being competitive is just dividing. Yes. So, you know, I seen a meme, uh, I seen a meme and I thought it was funny because they, they were making a big joke out of, uh, uh, you know, King Charles, you know, so King Charles is now the king. He got, you know, whatever that is. And, you know, he's standing on the balcony saying hi to everyone. And there was a court jester that was behind him and he's going now that i'm king um all these people seem to be upset about something they're gonna all take care of, they're all gonna come after me and and kill me and he goes no we've had this figured out for thousands of years we tell all the people that are carrying a torch that the people that are the worst people on the planet are the ones carrying the pitchfork <laughs> and then tell the people that are carrying, you got the pitchforks, that the worst people on the, on the planet are the people that are carrying the torches. So as long as we can keep them divided and focus and fighting on each other and thinking each other's bad, they won't even think of you. Don't worry about it. And I just went, ah, so it's always the division. It's always, you know, we don't like to be alone. So we want to be a part of a tribe. And being part of that tribe means that you got to have an adversary and you got to pick the other tribe, right? And so it it is pretty crazy that, you know, you're supposed to love yourself like you love your 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 brother or your sister. Mm -hmm. And so it is understandable for me that if a majority of people don't love their cells, then they're pretty much going to hate on everybody as well. But Craig, I'm not going to let you off the uh, off the hook. I feel like you, <laughs> you you really jumped on Matt's thing and and talked about the right fighter. But you know, is there something that you look back over your lifespan that that you were violently opposed to that you know you're 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 not anymore? Well, the one I thing that I know you opposed. I, I'll just say. <laughs> not... You know, I'll just say that, no, this is the way it is. I, I, yeah. um, well, one of the first things was, uh, the 40, 40, 40 rule. I remember okay. that. Um, and what is that? I don't that, even know what that is. In other words, work for four, work 40 hours a week for oh. 40 years and <laughs> retire at 40%. Like you've shared with us and things. Thank, but, thank you for bringing that back. That was obvious, but I yeah. just haven't heard or said that in a while. So, yeah. And I always, I actually thought, okay, fine. I'm going to work hard, work like crazy. My 40 hours a week for 40 years and I'm going to get my retirement. Yeah. It don't work that way especially <laughs> now yeah absolutely no i was gonna say like i i'm from those millennials and and obviously now we're the old we're getting older so then we're looking at gen z and going like what are you guys doing but it's i feel like that generational <laughs> yeah. stuff always exists because of the same thing we we're you were just talking about which is like hitting two groups of people against each other right mm -hmm. so it's like uh, when you have a bunch of the younger generation like quiet quitting so to speak um, their response, I guess, is like, well, where, where are the quiet raises, right? Yeah. Like they're being quiet with giving people what they are worth, right? So I, it, it goes back to just that respect thing. So, and I'm also going to go back to Robert and, you know, to an earlier point in my life when, um, when my mom and dad got divorced when I was young and 
I was told I was to be the man of the house. I mean, talk about big pressure. How old? Yeah. And how old were you? I was seven. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And both, you know, um, first of all, trying to figure out why it happened. And then, oh my God, I'm now thrown into this adult situation. And so for most of my life, especially even growing up in high school, follow the rules, be the leader, do the right thing, do the right thing that you've been taught. Mm. Not that, expand that, your mind. You, I love how you put those two together. Do what's right, what I tell you to do. <laughs> exactly. And then as I as I went through high school, I was like, you know, it was, I told the, told the line and I always tried to do my best. But so then when I, a, you were a real follower. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And in a sense, I'm going to be honest. I still am, but not, <laughs> not to the point. Uh like the voice message this morning. Hey, now that I'm part of the visionary <laughs> group, which, you know, this would be a good time to tell everybody this. Uh, Matt and I decided to pull um, uh, incredible Craig and his wisdom and his heart into the group. And you're looking at the three visionaries uh, moving forward and, and what we're doing. And so uh, Craig was gracious enough uh, to, to join with us and all the stuff that he did behind the scenes. There's nobody on the planet, and I mean this, Craig, there's nobody on the planet that when you read in um, the book, The Greatest Miracle in the World, and it says, if you want to have your life change, always go the extra mile. There is no one that I know of, including myself, that's more of an epitome of that person than Craig Jackman. So I agree somebody, with that oh statement. My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and so for some of you that are going, well, you pick Craig. Why didn't you pick me? That was the reason right there. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, it's simple. Craig is better. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course, but Craig yeah. is wonderful. You know, like the, I agree with what you said, dad, you know, like uh, to think back, uh, you know, I, even in my most helpful of times, I was still, making getting you know what i mean craig was helping us with stuff and he and he wasn't even part of he was just doing it out of the graciousness of his heart yeah and he's been that way so as long as i've known him as long as i've known him I've since known. i was a teenager i i believe yeah. so like it's he, yeah he's so, a constant so cool. giver i'm glad to have him on here with us congratulations well, craig for those of you you guys you, thank you, you. so but craig, see this is far, where it, if I may just finish up, because please, I, I know, uh, um, please, please, this is why what I have learned over the years, where instead of being a right fighter, yes, go the extra mile, but do it with kindness. Yeah, do it, do it because you want to do it. And you guys have allowed me to do that. And that, I love that. That, you know, it's. And if you can find some place to go to where you have the freedom to contribute, to be part of a an amazing tribe, an amazing group, an amazing group of visionaries, it's it's wonderful, and it it has totally changed my perspective, Robert. I mean, especially you know since getting to know you. Uh, and of course, we could talk about that another time about how we first got to meet. No, uh, I think but... we should talk about it now because no one wanted you and I to spend any time together because both of their perceptions of me and Craig were my <laughs> way or the highway were both right fighters. So everybody's going like, oh, crap. How are we going to get Robert and Craig to work together if they if they only could see us now? <laughs> oh, I know. This was 10 plus years ago. And Robert and I just kind of, we, we had a moment where we said, you know what, let's, let's talk about some things. And for, at a company that we used to work with, we went out into the garden area, as they called it, sat down on one of these kinds of tables and chairs, like you'd see at a French cafe. And we said, okay, we're going to just talk for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour, two and a half hours later. And 
it's like, cool. We each understand each other. Right. We know where we're going. We we feel that this we had is common, we had a common vision. Exactly. We had exactly. a common vision. And we basically agreed that whoever was spreading those lies and rumors, ignore it. Yeah. This is a, this is you and I, Robert. And look where we are today. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, and what and a, I and I great... get the opportunity to bring to have Matt along with, you know, <laughs> and and get to know the family from Matt and from uh, Junior, you know, and. Uh, uh, I haven't completely met Hannah yet, but I know that that's going to be coming. Uh, and I know Amy and I know Terry and I, uh, it's just when you find the right group of people to hang with, to yeah. be a part of your life, to share this journey, this adventure with, oh my God, it's so exciting. Because a lot of times you don't get a chance to create your own vision. You're going to see a lot of stuff that we're doing. Um, we're going to, um, not that I'm abandoning the Facebook vision group. I will continue to do what I've done for the last couple of years is post in there and, and have people upset that I posted in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just think, or Facebook that we share too much in there, you know, that yeah. at everyone <laughs> thing. the Facebook group to me is like, um, dad, have you ever just thought about sharing less? You know what, what I, what I think, what I think I would love to do with the Facebook group, but here we're talking about, uh, how do I know that Matt has tried to help me on this because I'm the kind of guy, and I explained this to Eric and a few other people that, that have troubles with things changing is that <laughs> Matt's been mad at me over the years that he's worked with me, because if I decide that I'm going to do something else then the way for me to move on is to destroy everything in the past. <laughs> so Matt gets up one day. Um, I, where's the videos? There's no videos. Uh, I said, I, I deleted them all. I, I shut down with, with Sia. We must've had 2 million views. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I just, I, I just closed it out. They warned me five times. They came back and said, <laughs> listen, listen, We'll give you all the time that you need. You can stop payment and we'll give you all the time you need to download the videos. And I went, I'm not interested. I'm starting over. So the reason we brought that up is that I'm not going to delete the Facebook vision group. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good anyway, just like this podcast will be like. You know, if you've ever um, followed certain podcasts, you can always go back to the first episode and see how it was going, like yeah. how they started it and where it ended up. And I I love the idea of like five, 10 years from now, being able to look back at this first one and go, wow. You know, I, I remember when we were all hanging out on Zoom and stuff and doing it this way, because like mm -hmm. we have big dreams for where we want to go with this. Oh, we'll, so like we'll, a studio we'll space to do it and everything. So we'll definitely go there. Yeah. So what we're doing is you guys are going to see a lot of the things we're doing with the inner circle and the stuff that we're moving forward with. It's going to be through a, a, a company called Discord and Matt will be able to post uh, where you can become a member at that. And for the inner circle members. Uh, you're going to be able to have a whole different section because you're in your inner circle on things that 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 will be able to communicate back and forth. We'll be in this group because we just want this inner circle and this group to continue to grow and grow and grow and just cause this giant ripple effect. And and um, you know it's a uh, it's just something that I know if I I'm the kind of person that that if other people are making a massive impact. And I've really seen, like, I'll give you a perfect example. You don't have to like this guy, but he inspires the hell out of me, is Gary V. And, and you know, when you see a lot of his content right now, he's really on this because I believe that he's probably in the last couple of years from his focus and his drive has put himself on the other side of money. I know that him and his wife are no longer together. And so he's pursuing new race relationships on that side. And, you know, people evolve and they change. And now his whole thing is he's going, listen, people need a whole new definition of success. And, and you know, just making money to spend money 
and be competitive because you have a nicer car, a nicer home, or went on vacations. I'm telling you right now, and everyone says the same thing. My mentor said it to me. Uh, I said, listen, I, you show me how to make a million dollars and I'll take that million dollars and I'll invest it correctly and I'll never work again. Um, you don't work if you fall in love with what, we, what you do. And I fall in love with evolving and being a better person. And as I'm learning those lessons, I just want to share them with you. And, and that's what the inner circle is all about. And, and the podcast is going to be us talking to people and doing interviews with people and just coming on here and just talking about whatever people are struggling with. We want you to know that the inner circle means a lot to us. And it's not that you other participators on this on, on this is not. But inner circles, if there's a, if there's a subject that you want us to hone in on, that, that you just want to hear you know, three people from different upbringings and, and, and different things. Uh, you know, we can, we, we, we have very, very unique perspectives at looking at a lot of things and, and uh, bringing on people for interviews and getting their perspective of what they used to think that they didn't, that they don't think anymore. I was thinking, Craig, how long has it been since you've had a job? Oh my gosh. Uh, I think it was our old company. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would have been um, 2016. 2016. Holy cow. Now, yeah. here's the crazy thing, you guys. You don't need to know the history about this, but uh, that company actually started in 2013. And, and uh, Craig was like the last employee to leave. So mm -hmm. I don't know of a person that has more loyalty than Craig. And, and, and these, this is a guy that came to Craig and say, said, listen, you know, we lost three people. So you got to do your job and their job. And I need to pay you less. And Craig's like, got to do what we got to do. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and so Craig is, Craig is definitely a visionary and wanting to see that it, it becomes the best. And, and uh, so um, I don't know. Do you guys have anything else to talk about? Well, I was going to say, since you brought up um, the Discord, I'll say first that what you were saying about Craig, he's incredibly loyal, amazing. So I'll just add that before I move on. But as far as the Discord guys. goes, this is like, if any of you guys haven't used Discord before, it's basically like Telegram to a certain extent, except way better than that it's like zoom to a certain extent except way better than that um most large uh companies use discord whether it's microsoft a, a bunch of them use slack and other things but Discord's really big for communities and it's easy to grow a community over on discord so we decided to set one up because youtube memberships have this unique ability where we can add inner circle members to this community um, and you'll have exclusive access to things. So I'm going to pull it up and show it to you guys real quick. And I'll Great shoot a video. Idea. Great idea. Um, I'll shoot a video explaining how to utilize it because we just started it yesterday. But we're really excited about it because it's going to give us the ability to um, just do all kinds of stuff with you guys. So I'm going to move it over right now. You can see here. Let me make sure that we're on live. I'm pretty sure it is. So this is Discord. This is our vision Discord. And on the top left up here, you'll see uh, that you can, it's happening right now. How do you know that episode one? So you can actually see in real time if we're doing a live event or doing a, a video or something, you can say you're interested or share it, um, whether it's YouTube or anything with a bunch of details. We're, this community is going to be for everybody that follows us, but obviously there's going to be specific spots, like my dad said, for inner circle members only. So in here will be it. You'll be able to see any new announcements that we have, whether it's new videos or or new podcasts or any new things like that. We're going to welcome one another. This is just general chat. We're, we've made spots even to share like gratitude and things because we're huge believers that if we all start doing that. It will become more of a habit for everybody to come in here and just post. Here's what I'm grateful for today. We have this area, which is just from Robert. This is stuff specific to him. So his own specific thoughts. So this is his thought today. 
Yes, so excited. Or yesterday. <laughs> We've got areas like morning routine because a lot of people ask. So we're going to try to put some content in here explaining what my dad does on a day to day basis. And that might be small little clips of, of something he does as part of his daily routine uh, or morning routine or just comments on what he's changing or what he's doing that's been helping him out. So I know the six phase meditation and things would definitely be in there. This is just inspirational shares. So anything that my dad finds inspirational on the internet <laughs> or videos he can share with you guys. And then this is just his daily videos. So every single live. And then down here, we'll have stuff for inner circle members, which will be challenges where we can challenge you guys. Here's where our, we'll, we'll hold all the breakthrough sessions. We can talk about them afterwards in there. So maybe you missed it, but you want to talk about it. You can there. This is the part that a lot of people are going to love. You can come in here and just ask for help. Say, listen, I'm dealing with this issue. What do you guys think? And we will have Discord open and be able to talk to you. So if it's outside of an AMA or a breakthrough session, you can still reach out to us. And this is this will be a place that all three of us can respond to and other experts or people that we bring in. Um, other visionaries can also help you. Here you can share your wins. So we've had a lot of wins <laughs> from people doing Mastering the Science of Getting Rich and then now the breakthrough sessions and the inner circle. We constantly have wins that are shared. So this will give people the ability to share those with the rest of the community and get um, positive feedback on what they're doing and stuff. Here's a spot where you can just tell people who you are. Here's a spot because we have been lately sharing our own YouTube channels with one another inside of the inner circle and following one another, giving each other that boost of support and watching each other's lives and stuff. So this is an area where you'll be able to do that. You know, you can share on here, here's my YouTube channel and here's what I'm doing with it. Could you guys please show me some love, show me some support and give you more social proof, I guess. More people are supporting you. Therefore, your channel is in the algorithm of YouTube is more worth watching. So then it promotes Yeah, and other more. people get to see people's path, you know? Right, exactly. It's like, like wow. you'll eventually be able to scroll and see in here, oh, so-and-so started their YouTube channel now look where they are now like two years later how many subscribers they have so then you got training videos this will just be things that aren't breakthroughs that we drop like the the three video um inner circle video that my dad recently posted if you're an inner circle member um he's posted a brand new video on the three types of content that you should be making on your youtube channel and then this will just be tools and resources that we think so like books whether it's uh certain website tools i'm using AI like all the time now for so many different things. So I'll definitely be sharing what how I'm using those resources to both grow what we're doing here and other things that I'm growing. So um, definitely an area for that. So I just wanted to share all of this with you guys and say and every everyone's asking where where do I go? Where do I right. RobertHollis.com forward slash Discord. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to download Discord. And like I said, I'll make a video explaining how to do this. But if you go there, it'll give you a direct link to joining this community. And when you join on here, you'll, you'll have to make an account and just, just like you would with Telegram or Facebook or anything like that. So make an account and then hop on here. Uh, it, it will be great. We, we plan on using this tool like every day every day so yep. if you're an inner circle member we're still getting it connected so you guys will automatically go into into the inner circle stuff but in the meantime um if i see an inner circle member join i'll just automatically give you access to this until it's it's automated and it does it so right once again roberthollis.com forward slash discord to hop on and join so and uh can everyone give matt i i mean i'm looking at all this stuff <clears throat> and uh uh, Matt is part of the coach that I, that I'm l learning from. And to think that Matt just became a member of that discord and virtually took everything he had. <laughs> so you can, you can mirror and match people that make millions of dollars a month. And, 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 uh, you know, you, you miss by a long shot and you do pretty good. So Matt, I, I can't, I know the kind of person you are. So thank you so much for all the hours that you spent learning, learning about discord and, and uh, us being on the same level as uh, some of the people that are making the biggest impact. Absolutely. No, I'm excited about it because I'm a huge, you know, it's funny <laughs> slowly, but surely we're moving over to everything that I've always wanted to, which is like a dream, right? 
This is being streamed on YouTube, which is something I always wanted us to be doing. Yep. We're starting a podcast, which is something I've always wanted us to do. We're streaming through uh, streaming software, which makes our capabilities of what we can share with you guys, like pulling up Discord really quickly like that and explaining it a lot easier than just using Zoom in itself. So that's fun. And then, of course, Discord in general, I, I think the way that we will grow that community over there, I, I honestly feel like outside of YouTube, that will be the number one spot to talk to us yeah. and to get connected with us and to find it. Honestly, Discord, if you want to think about it, it, it's like having an email address and email, except way better than that, because now we're part of a community and all mm -hmm. of us can share. We don't have to, you know, CC 50 people in man. <laughs> well, the, so. the thing the thing I love most about it is is uh, so you guys get my perception is, um, you know, there's a lot of videos over the years that I put into the Facebook group. And again, this is not being negative about Facebook. But what ends up happening is people either I do my Facebook lives on Facebook. I, I also post them on my my business page, Robert Hollis Sr. Then I would put them in the group. And the problem with that is if someone said to me, Robert, do you have a video where you explain how to build an audience? You know, how to how to go out and find friends. I have videos on the YouTube that if you just went to YouTube and put in the uh, magnifying glass, the search feature, and just put the word friend in. That Facebook now is a totally different animal than it was five years ago. Because I'm noticing that it's pulling up videos that not only have friend in the title, but it has friend in the video. I talked someplace in there where I was talking about how you can create friends to get them to know, like, and trust you. And and it and its algorithm is smart enough and its search is smart enough. It's like, well, it's all been quote unquote uh, transcribed. So now YouTube's looking through all the whole entire videos and they're finding every place in where I talked about how you can build a friend, you know, because people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And so what people have been trying to do that are struggling in the world and building an audience for their voice is what they're trying to do is get involved in a company and trying to sell them on something or trying to get them to pay money to get involved in something. Wait a minute. I don't freaking know you. I don't know you. I don't know why you're bothering me. I don't know why you sent me this chapter of a book along with a link. See, because everyone does things believing they're a shortcut. And that goes right back to the subject of this YouTube. I mean, this deal. How do you know that? Well, Jim Joe Bob said that's the way that you sell stuff on the internet. Um, have you seen Jim Joe Bob back office? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, he said, like someone told me the other day, I seen a YouTube video and, and uh, I noticed that his YouTube video, he said that he made $48,000 in a month. And I said, send me the YouTube video. And I said, well, I looked on his YouTube channel. I then went to the newest videos. Why doesn't he have an update video? Why does he show me that he made $48,000 in one month, two years ago? All right. So you guys know that I come from the engineering world. If you said, wow, who's winning? What race? The race last month when they brought Wilkes Barrel, North Carolina, back as a track that's been out of business for 26 years, and Kyle Larson won. Yeah, that's the way I am. That's the way I am. It's like, who's getting it done and getting it done today? You know what I mean? Right. So there's still people out there that you guys are listening to, working hard, doing what they told you to do that are stuff that they don't do that they heard from somebody else years ago. That's a freaking problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that that's where we get this stuff where, you know, hey, make sure you put your jacket on. It's cold outside. We don't want you to catch a cold. Um, no, you, you don't catch a virus from just being in a lower temperature you catch a virus from someone that's got a virus. You know what I mean? 
don't you swallow bubble gum because it never leaves your digestive <laughs> system. Um, no, that's not true. Yeah, see, what you're sharing is so interesting because there's a part of us as we grow up that realizes these things are not true. Like, oh, I stole your nose type of stuff. <laughs> but then we're still so right. Exactly. Right. We're still so like, there's still so many other things that are that way. And we're yeah. adults and we still act like they are that way. Like we still believe we know, I guess, you know what I mean? And, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that time. I'm the know-it-all, but virtually every time I hear a catchphrase, I'll go on AI now and I'll say, where the hell did this come from? You know, like mm -hmm. raining cats and dogs. It's like, aren't those idioms? Like, isn't that what it is? It, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. but but the point is, is someone said raining cats and dogs, and now everybody says, "Oh my God, it's raining cats and dogs." It is not. Why are we saying it? And where the hell did this come from? What nine times out of ten, when I look it up, it's some niche commercial from back in the day that everybody was forced to watch because there's multiple or, channels. Or, or Where's the beef? Um, right, exactly. Right. And, and if you guys don't mind, I'd like to go a little longer because no, please. there's some of these things that I just um if someone could help me, I'm gonna ask the audience to help me with this. There used to be a uh, uh, an HBO special. I'm talking quite a while ago. And there was this guy, it wasn't like Bill Maher's old show, Politically Correct, but it was a guy that would show up in, in university and go to the class that say these people were seniors in history. All right, you guys following me? Mm -hmm. And he would go to that class and he's going, so who are who alerted everyone that the British is coming? The British is coming. These are seniors. And their mastery master is in history. And they would go, um, Paul Revere. Paul Revere. And he goes, No, it wasn't Paul Revere. <laughs> so these are history majors getting a degree in history, supposed to go teach at schools history and he would go through and document now why wasn't it paul revere it was this other guy called jim baggy bagostester <laughs> and he goes okay so wh why did why 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 didn't they use his name because nothing rhymes with biggest stature you know what i mean so, and I hope someone, you know, looks on, on YouTube, I mean, Google and finds this. So back then everything was shared in writing and the people that were writers wanted to be wordsmiths. So like the rappers of today, they wanted things to rhyme in words in their books. These are people that are writing history and they're changing history because they want it to sound better. They want it to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> so when you find out that Paul Revere had something little to do it, with it, but he wasn't the guy that was uh, Henry Longfellow, all right? Someone wrote down here. And and so it's like all of a that's sudden- That's who wrote the poem. Huh? Oh, that's who, that's that who wrote, wrote the, the poem. poem. Okay, uh, the, the guy's, yeah, the guy's name is, let's see, I just had it here a minute ago. William Dawes. William Dawes. So did Paul Revere warn people? Yes, he did. But he wasn't the guy that was going from village to village to village enough to create momentum of enough farmers to get together to go out and fight for the right for us to have the country. Isn't that crazy? And so he had this whole thing, and he's an actor, Craig. Uh, hopefully, we will be able to find this. But I loved every episode because some of you, uh, I hope, don't get offended by this. But me and Matt used to watch a, a show called Bullshit, you know, and it was Penn and Teller. And Penn and Teller would be these people that would say, hey, this is bullshit. <laughs> and so... One of the best episodes that I loved or the best uh, parts of an episode is why, why don't we know that people are lying? 
why don't we know that people are lying? And what he said is because it's always one level away from the liar. So listen closely. So you got one person that knows that they know that they know that they're lying to you. But then that person talks to somebody else and that person believes every word they're saying. Like, uh, did you guys hear that uh, if uh, Bill Gates said that if he ever went bankrupt with Microsoft, that he would regain all his wealth by getting involved in network marketing? Bullshit. Never happened. Uh, how about you guys want to hear another one, right? More millionaires are made in network marketing than any other industry. Bullshit. See what I mean? It's like, how many things have you said because someone else said it? And it's not true. So that's the point. The point is, is that you hear it from somebody where our company is the fastest growing. We have the best products. We have the most lucrative compensation plan. And when you say stuff like that, because you're in a competitive state, do you know people are listening to you and going, you don't even know every company that's growing? What you just told me is not true. Because if you say, my company has the best comp plan in the world, you don't know every comp plan in the world. <laughs> Are you guys following me? It's like, it's like, so my mentor even taught me to say around numbers, right? You like people say, isn't there like, isn't there over like 30 million people in California? If you do that, you're going to have three people that are going to go, no, it's this. Another person that's Googling and says it's this. And then they looked at an old post and they say it's this. Do you understand why everyone's struggling in the world right now? Because people can go to AI and people can go to Google and they can get three different answers to a question. <laughs> it's like, because who put the stuff up on there, <laughs> right? So how do you know that is really, really, really crazy. Because when you start thinking about how we uh, not only well, well, find out that, that Santa Claus is not real, sorry, Corky, uh, when he rewatches this, but, but, it's like it's it's a it's different Santas. You know, uh, someone said you want a real shock. It showed a bunch of kids standing across the street and they were all crying. And the reason they were crying is because they got a break at lunch at the Santa convention. And so these kids are looking across the street and watching three hundred Santas walk out of a door. It's like what, what? Some are black, uh, some are Asian, some are women, uh, uh, some of are, some of them are Hispanic. No. <laughs> so it's not that we just know that sometimes we're lied to. We got to perpetuate the lie. It's like, is there a part of us that goes, well, people lied to me my whole life, then I'm going to lie to people my whole life. <laughs> So you got people out there is like, is this a pyramid? You know what I mean? Isn't this a scam? Well, again, how do you know that? If you guys will always notice, I love challenging people on where they get the information. They say, listen, I think this is a pyramid. This is illegal. And I said, are you one of those people that if you've seen a small child getting hurt, would you come to their defense or would you just watch? And they would go, I'd come to their defense. And I go, great, here's my phone. Call 911 and report us. You, you need to get this over with right now. There's Corky. Oh, my God. I thought Corky was camping. I thought I was going to get away with it. Corky, thank you so much for being a super chatter. <laughs> By the way, you guys, this is the real Santa right here. Corky Hinter is the real Santa. <laughs> So make sure to follow him on TikTok. He's got over a million followers. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you guys got anything else to to, to say? Uh, I know that um, I know that I went on for a while there, but there's so many cliches and little words that we hear, and 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 things that uh, you know. It, it's right. 
if you got a different if you got a different thought then you're a conspiracy theorist <laughs> oh i do want to bring up one other thing sure I was looking at a post that i just posted two days ago and i don't know if you guys know this but i'm 61 years old and just by my knowledge i'm aware of two times that the world was going to end and i'm not talking about the second coming right so all of a sudden, Prince came out with a song as I'm going to party like it's 1999. So that ought to tell you that it was in the consciousness everywhere. And why he said we've got to party like it's 1999 is because everything we use is electric and it works on computer chips. And they didn't program into the computers. <laughs> zero, zero. Zero, zero. So when it was 1999 and it turns to 2000, that all the computers were going to stop. Computers run the power grid. Uh, the power grid would go down. We can't get water. The ATMs don't work. No one can get money. And it doesn't make a difference if you had money because there's no way that the grocery stores or the gas stations can check you out because they run on electricity. So... It's done. It, it's done. And so we're watching New York, you know, tuning into the year. Ding, ding, ding. The ball flies. Happy New Year. And it's year 2000. And nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing happened. You know, it, it wasn't like one small computer for a small bank didn't work. No, there was nothing. Zero. So then we've been studying the Mayans because the Mayans, you know, are smarter and they develop stuff that we still don't know how to develop, like even the pyramids, right? And so they figured out all this stuff, but no one knows why they stopped predicting the future at 12, 12, 2012. So there's no... 12, 13, 2012. So since the Mayans are so smart and they know everything that's happening in the universe, the, the world's going to end. The reason that they didn't see a future after December 12th, <laughs> 2012, is because the world's over. The world's over. I, again, we're here. All right? So I think it's pretty interesting and I'll let Matt and 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 uh, Craig have the last words here, but I think it's pretty interesting that you got a whole group of people that believe that something's going to happen, and it doesn't happen. You would think that sooner or later people would just go, you know, I think you keep bringing this crap up, and it's not true. Me and Mom are laughing today because guess what's going to happen this Memorial Day? It's going to be the most traveled holiday in history. Uh, if you don't believe it, watch the news tonight. It, it It's never compared to any other holiday before this one. Everyone's the, the most traveled holiday. And oh, my God, the gas prices. And oh, my God, the airlines. And oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Uh, I just have a feeling that after Memorial Day, and thank you very much for those that served and your family. Uh, I just have a feeling that, you know, Tuesday is going to come after Memorial Day. I just, I just have a feeling. So thank you so much for being a part of our very first podcast, uh, How Do You Know That, uh, with Robert Hollis and my incredible visionaries, uh, Craig Jackman and, and Matthew. So I'll I'll, I'll leave them with the last words. I don't care who goes first. Mr. Mr. Promoter might 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 go last. So Matt, go ahead. <laughs> no, I <laughs> sure I can go. I I just want to say thank you for not only tuning in to our first attempt at a podcast and trying this. I think we did pretty good, but thank you so much to Craig and my dad for uh, making this happen. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how far we go with this and how far we take it because like the possibilities even from what we shared today are pretty much endless and where we could yeah. go with this. And so I, I'm looking forward to next week's episode. So far right now, the plan is to interview somebody next week. 
I believe we're so. Not, yeah. We're not gonna we're not gonna release names until we have it completely confirmed. But next week, my dad will be sitting down with somebody in specific and be interviewing them. So me and Craig will be hanging out, probably watching, but uh, and running it. But I'm excited for that because I, even though it's been amazing hearing from the three of us and having us on here, uh, I'm really looking forward to my dad sitting down and tackling how do you know that with some of the biggest and best and brightest people in the world. And I know that's where we'll take this. Yep. So, you know, eventually we're going to be sitting down. He's going to be sitting across. We're going to have that nice studio that I want so badly. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And, and he'll be sitting down next to some of the world's leaders and asking them how, how they went through things and how did they uh, conquer those things. So thank you guys again for being on here. Like I, I was saying, the plan is to do another one next week. Um, same time, same place, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Seems like the perfect time. So yep. um, looking forward to that. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Matt. I love you. To you, Craig. Love you too. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know how I can follow all of that up. I mean, you guys you know, just nailed it perfectly. Um, just, Matt, thank you so much for being our foundation. You know, you, you've set this whole thing up. You are the driving force here, and you, you, I love how working together that the, you are the, – on a subway, it takes three rails. There's the, the, the two guide rails, and then there's the, the guy that is the, you know, has the electrical. There's the electrical in the middle <laughs> or on top, and that's what we're doing with this. You know, we've got, we've got our three people here. Uh, two that are uh, running the rail. Depend it doesn't matter who's doing it because right. we all interchange. And then there's the one that's the spark. Now, in this case, I'm going to say that Robert is our spark. I agree. He's our electricity. <laughs> and that you and I, Matt, are the rails. But it takes, uh, it takes every one of us to do this. And this is going to be an amazing journey, an amazing yeah, adventure. Agree. And I'm just blessed and honored to be here with you guys to do this. And I'm also going to invite each and every one of you that are listening and watching to join us. RobertHollis.com forward slash join. Become part of the inner circle. Go to Discord. RobertHollis.com forward slash Discord. D-I-S-C-O-R-D. And let's build this amazing community. How do you know that? We don't. We just know that this is the direction that we want to go and we really want you to join us. And with all of you joining us, we will know that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get the answer somewhere. Right. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I believe coming to things collectively with a group is, is one of the biggest like epiphanies you can have in your life. You know, there's there. I've seen that through my own personal process through mastering the science of getting rich doing that and like i i really think there's a lot of people out there that are looking for a community like we're developing yeah. and we may be leading it but at the same time we're just part of the community and we like it that way we loved having mastering the science of getting rich and the inner circle the way that we have it where it really feels like a community and if you if you've been looking for a place that you can surround yourself with positive people that support each other in what they want to do not a roadmap going this is what to do but going how can we help you accomplish and get to the place that you want to be in how can you and be support you for too. you because every person's different and so that's our real goal with this so thank you so much dad thank you so much craig um thank, thank you everybody you, for watching and we'll and see you guys next time right we can say that uh so far on the discord i'm looking at names of arthur wayno melody riba and santa we already Corky. got people so it's starting to grow and it's because of each and every one of you watching and listening we Absolutely. love you we appreciate you and what was that <laughs> robert notification that, that was that was arthur he was uh i got it on my watch saying arthur became a uh a discord member so thank you and I saw that Dave Thompson posted that he was on his way to Discord in the chat in YouTube or in YouTube chat. So thank you guys very much. This has been an amazing, great first podcast. As Dave Thompson said, also Sarah Lipscomb uh, and Karen Owens, 
Positively Polly, uh, Jim Mullaney. You know, it's you who help us get this going. It's you who drive us, and we are thankful that you are part of this journey with us. Um, Matthew, Robert, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time, everyone. See you next time.